my dude? Well, I'll be John Brown. Today we will use electric circuit models and rigid body dynamics models to put together a model for a computer controlled robot of the type used in high school robotics competitions. We'll analyze both open loop performance and the performance of a PID proportional integral derivative controller. The graphic shows a VEX robot. The components of the robot that we will model are first the computer. The computer is on board the robot and is used to control the motors on the robot. The robot is run in competitions in both remote controlled and autonomous operation. We will model autonomous operation only and we'll write a MATLAB version of the onboard control program. We will model only motion in a straight line and our control program will consist of exactly one line of code. We'll model the motor from input voltage command to output torque and also the wheel encoder. A robot can be equipped with a wheel encoder that the computer can read to determine the position of the wheel. And we'll model the dynamics of the robot cart itself. We start with the wheel drive motor. The motor itself consists of a casing and an enclosed rotor. A typical electric motor armature is shown. Electric current through the winding of the rotor creates a magnetic field around the rotor that interacts with the fixed magnetic field of the casing, creating a torque on the rotor. The amount of torque is proportional to the armature current. The model for the motor electric circuit is shown. The robot's computer controls the input voltage V sub A, which in turn drives current through the armature winding. The resistor R in the circuit represents the armature resistance, and the inductor L represents the armature inductance. Current through the armature winding is represented by I sub A. It creates a torque on the rotor, T sub m, where T sub m equals the motor torque constant, K sub m, times I sub a, the armature current. The torque on the rotor causes it to spin with rotation rate omega. Omega equals theta prime, where theta is the rotor angle. The spinning rotor induces a back voltage in the circuit, represented by the voltage source V sub b on the right with the back voltage V sub B being equal to the motor back EMF constant K sub B times omega, the rotor spin rate. From Kirchhoff's voltage law, we have the input voltage V sub A equals the sum of the resistor, inductor, and back voltages. The resistor voltage V sub R equals R times I sub A. The inductor voltage V sub L equals L times I sub A prime. The back voltage V sub B equals K sub B times omega. So solving for I sub A prime, we have a circuit model for the inductor as shown with the proviso that the right-hand side of the equation contains the rotor spin rate omega, and we don't have an equation for omega yet. Now we'll consider a dynamics model for the rotor. For simplicity's sake, we will assume that the rotor is connected directly to the wheel axle without gearing. I think that is the case, but I'm not sure. Note that the input voltage supplies energy to the circuit motor card combination, 
and that energy is transferred to the inductor magnetic field and to the spinning rotor of the motor. So our model will have two state variables, the inductor current, that is the armature current, I sub A, and the rotor spin rate, omega. We have a differential equation for the armature current. Now we need a differential equation for state variable omega, that is, an equation for the rate of change of omega. The rotor wheel combination has moment of inertia J, and there are three applied torques. The motor torque, T sub M, a torque due to viscous damping, which equals B times omega, where B is the damping coefficient of the rotor, and the torque that the floor applies to the wheel, that's T sub F. We have expressions for the motor torque and the viscous damping torque. How about the floor torque? We're looking at the drive wheel of the cart, with the axle of the wheel being the rotor of the motor. When the motor spins, that is, accelerates the rotor in a clockwise direction, the car accelerates to the right. Since the car is accelerating, we can apply Newton's second law of motion that tells us that the applied force equals the mass times the acceleration. That's equation one. What forces are acting on the car? The only thing touching the car is the floor, where the wheel is in contact with the floor. So the force accelerating the car is being supplied by the floor. The velocity of the car equals the clockwise spin rate of the axis times the race of the wheel, r. So the acceleration of the car equals the clockwise acceleration of the rotor times r, which equals minus r times theta prime prime, with a minus appearing because the rotation is negative. That's equation three. The force F not only accelerates the center of mass of the car, it also creates a negative torque on the wheel. The torque is given by F times R and equals minus the mass of the car times theta prime prime times R squared, as shown in equation four. We'll call this T sub F the torque that the floor is applying to the rotor. And we have from Newton's second law of rotational motion equation five, theta double prime equals the torque applied to the rotor divided by the rotor's moment of inertia. From the previous slide, the total torque on the rotor is the torque due to the motor, T sub m, the damping torque minus B times omega, and the torque applied by the floor, T sub f. And dividing this by the moment of inertia, J, we have equation six, which can be solved for theta prime prime, giving equation seven, and that's our differential equation for the second state variable, omega. So now we have our differential equation model, and we can write the computational equations as shown. For our first run, we'll have no energy sinks in the system. That is, the armature resistance R will be zero and the rotor damping coefficient B will be zero. The control voltage V sub A is programmed to be a one second pulse of one volt that occurs at T equals two seconds. Okay, now let's see what happens as a result. You have to pay close attention. At t equals two, the control voltage jumps up and it appears immediately on the inductor terminals, so that jumps up too. For one second, the current ramps up, the rotor torque is positive, and omega, the rotor rate, and omega prime, the rotor acceleration, ramp up. At t equals three, VA drops to zero and the resistor voltage of one volt appears as a negative voltage on the inductor terminals. Now the inductor magnetic field keeps the positive current flowing and positive torque on the rotor as the magnetic field collapses. So the rotor spin rate keeps increasing. At T equals four, the current drops to zero. Now there is no energy in the inductor magnetic field. The rotor spin rate in green is at its max and all the energy in the system is in the rotor. 
The back EMF voltage appears on the inductor terminals and drives the current negative. The rotor torque is negative and the rotor slows down as the inductor magnetic field negatively energizes. At T equals 6, the rotor spin rate is 0, the current is at a negative max, and the inductor voltage is 0. Now, all the energy is in the inductor magnetic field. The inductor drives the spin rate negative, and theta starts decreasing. At 7.4, the inductor current has increased to 0. The spin rate is at a negative max, and all the energy is in the spinning rotor. The back EMF voltage appears on the inductor terminals and drives the current positive. The rotor torque is positive and the rotor starts speeding up. At t equals 8.1 seconds, the rotor spin rate is zero, theta is back to zero, and all the energy is in the inductor magnetic field, which starts driving the spin rate positive, and the process repeats, with the energy bouncing back and forth between the inductor magnetic field and the rotor spin rate. The system is an electro mechanical oscillator. We add damping and we get more representative behavior. The command starts at t equals two seconds and lasts for one second. The motion continues until about t equals four seconds and the robot reaches its goal. The alternative to running open loop is to run a closed loop control algorithm. Accordingly, VEX robots can be equipped with an encoder on a wheel axis, and the control computer can read the encoder to determine the current wheel position and feed that information back to the control algorithm. The simplest controller is a PID controller using only the P constant. PID stands for Proportional, Integral, and Derivative. The PID control algorithm starts with an error signal. For us, the error signal will be the goal of the command, the desired position of the robot, theta sub g, minus the current position, theta of t. The general form of the PID algorithm computes the error signal, the integral of the error signal, and the derivative of the error signal, and uses these numbers multiplied by constants, the P, I, and D constants, to compute the control signal. For us, the computation is a one-liner. The control voltage equals P times the error signal, or P times the goal theta minus the current theta. The graph shows the results using a commanded theta of one and a proportional constant Kp equals 1.2. The blue graph is theta and the green graph is the commanded voltage. Increasing the proportional constant to 2 increases the speed of the system, but it introduces The assignment is, as usual, program the sims in the video and reproduce the results. Well, I'll be John Brown. Ah!